I'm gonna say it, the best way to play Minecraft is on a super flat world. Okay, I know I sound crazy, but hear me out. Look, super flat worlds are very, very open. There's just three layers of dirt and bedrock. Other than the structures that generate, that's it. Which, you know, sounds bad, but you're instantly given a free canvas with absolutely nothing in the way to stop you from building up anything in whatever style you want. Whether that's some creepy tower mega base build or a massive museum or an incredible city, and yes, all of this was built in a super flat world in survival mode. However, super flat worlds are exclusively a plains biome, meaning there are some blocks that are impossible to get, some animals that cannot spawn, and some structures that cannot generate at all. Now, this might seem like a huge drawback, and it kind of is, but here's the twist. These limitations can actually push your creativity further than ever before, because you will have to think outside the box, survive and build in ways that most players have never even considered before. But I'm getting ahead of myself. When you start off on a super flat world, you will have nothing. But if you find a village, you can get quite a lot of gear fairly quickly, and soon you might be ready to enter the nether. But after, how are you going to get all the blocks you'll need for your base? Well, some blocks are pretty obvious to get, you can get most of these from villages, but some of the more complex blocks like different types of wood, sand and prismarine are going to be a bit tricky to get. I should start off by saying that the nether and the end are the exact same as in regular worlds. There's nothing fancy going on in super flat, so all the blocks in the nether and the end dimensions are completely obtainable, so that's fine. But the same, however, can't be said about the overworld, because where in a super flat world there are no caves, meaning there's going to be no ores. Similarly, there's no sea temples, so all the prismarine blocks are unobtainable. But what I think sucks most is that there are no tall flowers, like these are also impossible to get. Now, all of this might sound like a bad thing, you know, there are lots of things that cannot even be generated in a super flat world, so you might think that sand, coral blocks, cactus and sugarcane are completely impossible to get too. But there is the Wandering Trader. He makes blocks like sand, all the dyes, sugarcane, and all the types of wood obtainable. In most boring worlds, this guy is kind of useless. I mean, seriously, one emerald for eight sand is kind of insane. But in super flat, he is incredibly useful. So if you see this guy wandering around in your super flat world, trade with him, you never know what you'll need next. And you know, don't kill him, he's a cool guy. <laughs> so now that you've got some gear, some blocks, what can you build? Well, obviously you'll want a house, a little base of operation, is always good to keep your stuff safe, but I know you'd want something bigger. And this is where super flat worlds are amazing. Terraforming is so much easier. This was a massive terraforming project that I and a few friends made, and it looks pretty good. I think it took about two weeks to build, which isn't really too bad. It goes without saying that this is an incredibly large build, but you could certainly do something like this in your super flat world. And it really is only in a super flat world where you can build something this large while having so much control on how you want everything to look. And, oh my gosh, it looks so cool. I love it so much. Pixel art. This is such an easy thing to do in a super flat world. You don't need to smooth out land or do anything special because <laughs> it's already level for you. If you build it up, get a map, and place it on an item frame, you have a cool piece of artwork. A friend of mine has spent a long time working on a lot of pixel art, and he was able to build up all of these in survival mode. Now, these were the two main things that I could think of that you can build so much more easily in a super flat world than in a regular world, making worlds like this, in my opinion, so much better. However, super flat worlds are, to put it lightly, incredibly weird, and in quite a few different ways. One of them is that strongholds generate at the exact same coordinates regardless of the seed. For example, there is a stronghold here at coordinates minus 400, minus 1700. If I copy these coordinates, load up a new world, then teleport to those same coordinates again, there should be a stronghold right here, boom! And thankfully, someone has made a list of where all these strongholds generate at. This is quite a weird quirk about super flat worlds, I know, but because strongholds generate in the air, it means you could incorporate the end portal in your base. This would be so cool! I haven't seen too many people do this before, and it would only really be in a super flat world that a base like this would even be possible to build. If someone does do this, please let me know. Another weird thing about super flat worlds is that the version you first load up the game in 
affects what structures can generate. If you were to load up the recent version of Minecraft, make a super flat world, then the only structures that generate are going to be villages and strongholds. Now, if this is all that you want, then that's fine, and you can still build up a fairly large world with just these two, but if you do want all the structures, you're going to have to generate your world in a pretty specific way. And someone has made a visualizer for this. It is quite self-explanatory, so I'll just show this. Super flat versions themselves are also pretty weird. Normally, as updates get released, more things are added to the world, you know, expanding it each time. But in super flat, this isn't always the case. Take axolotls, for example. They were obtainable in version 1.17, but in the very next update, they were removed. And there are a few other examples of this happening. Now, this might all seem like quite a bad thing, but it makes super flat worlds so much more interesting to play on, mainly because you have no full idea on what to expect with each update. So at this stage, you've got a super flat world, got some stuff, and maybe even got a plan on what you're gonna build. But how do you stop yourself from being bored and get over that two week long Minecraft itch? Well, number one, don't cheat. I know this is so much easier said than done, and it can be very tempting to do, but if you do cheat, it will just ruin the value of everything you've already built up. And that sucks. I'd say the temptation to cheat definitely lowers the more you play on a world, in my opinion, but that being said, feel free to change the rules. In other words, kind of ignore the previous point. If you feel really disheartened every time you lose your stuff, turn on keep inventory. That way, if you do die, you won't lose all your stuff. If endermen keep picking up blocks on a terraforming project, leaving holes everywhere, get a data pack that stops that from happening. And if people say that this is the wrong way to play Minecraft, or it's cheating, or whatever, if you're having fun and making something cool that you're proud of, then completely ignore what they say. What do they know? <laughs> Take your own twist on super flat. There are so many different types of super flat worlds that you can generate. Different presets, you can set custom layers, design a world exactly how you want. I haven't ran the numbers, so to speak, but there's definitely over a trillion different types of super flat worlds you can make. This means that you might be the only person in the world who has an, I don't know, a redstone ready super flat survival world. And if you build something cool on that world, it's incredibly impressive. Since super flat has pretty much gone untouched, there are aspects to it that literally no one has ever tried. Like, for example, I have no idea if it's even possible to get grass on a water-only world. Surely it's possible, but I, I really have no idea. YouTube. It's a really good place to get inspiration and motivation to build something new. About a year ago, I saw organic builds pop up on YouTube, and I thought they were really cool. But to me, organic builds are really tough. In fact, at the time, I'd never even built something like that before. So I spent a long time practicing, getting better, and I managed managed to build this dragon, and to this day, this is still one of my most favourite builds I've ever done in Minecraft. There are some really cool YouTubers in the super flat niche, all working on their own unique super flat world. I also make some videos too, you could check them out if you want. <laughs> Discord. Now that you've built something up, got a cool world, share it. I have an entire section on my Discord server dedicated to builds, and it's probably one of my most favourite places on the Discord, mainly because I can see what you guys build, and I can also steal some of your ideas. I'm not gonna lie, I, I do this quite a lot. <laughs> I really recommend that you do make a super flat world, or at least try it out. I used to play the regular Minecraft worlds, but I ended up getting bored of them fairly quickly, and I just needed something different. Hardcore didn't appeal to me, but super flat did. If you do make a super flat world, or at least plan on making one, let me know what you do. I would really love to see what you guys build. Anyway, good luck building!